Hey, everybody, I'm Lewis Amosler with the Bakersfield Californian, and this is a very special Condors Unleashed brought to you by the Bakersfield California today. And uh, we are kind of reminiscing over the last 17 seasons of Condors hockey in the uh, ECHL. I'm joined now by Condors beat writer down there at the end, Mike Griffith, <laughs> and uh, the man, the myth, Kevin Bartle, Vice President of Communications and uh, – one of the voices of the Condors. Uh, he breaks his microphone here. I know. It's broken. It's I, already broken. I'm sorry. It's all right. I thought Kevin would be off golfing now or something. It's summer. I mean, what's he got? All, what's he <laughs> no, going to do? It's the off season. This is going to be, the, without a doubt, the busiest off season in Condors history. Without a doubt. You've already got the new, you already got the new, uh, the new swag. No, these aren't new. These, these aren't new. Are, that's a, that's, that's, that's the, old logo. But those are coming. Those are coming. Those are coming. Well, this season uh, was the last for the Condors in the ECHL. This is the last of the colors that you will see. And uh, the switchover is already underway. That uh, We are seeing the Oilers colors uh, and some slight changes to the uh, Condors logo. But what we really want to talk about, Mike's got a feature coming out on Sunday, uh, or Monday, I should say, on the, the kind of the, the key moments in Condors history. And uh, we're going to kind of go over a few of those with uh, Mike and Kevin Bartle will react to some of those, and we'll go with uh, Mike. So, uh, you've well, seen not so much a feature, but more of a just uh, looking back, trying to pick out around ten or so things. And, and of course, my memory is uh, I can't remember what I ate for breakfast two hours ago. So, <laughs> it's it, it, it's it's kind of tough because I forget things in the past. I'm not a trivia guy, but the good thing is there you can go and search and you remember certain things. And I I mean obviously uh, any list has to have the Marty Raymond uh, bucket kicking incident. <laughs> Marty, a great coach, and and, and uh, he just blew up. He was upset about the way a game was being officiated. Uh, goaltender's mask got ripped off on a play. No penalty was called. Things weren't going well. They were losing the game. So he starts chucking stuff on the ice and sticks, going to the stick rack and chucking a, a handful of sticks, and then another handful of sticks. Yeah. He takes the five-gallon water cooler, puts it up, on the boards, and karate kicks it onto the ice. Classic. <laughs> it was, the funny thing about that moment was it was really kind of – that was uh, 08, 09, was it? Yeah, I, th I think it was 08. What's your notes? What's I'm notes? fuzzy on the stuff that. in between. Yeah. But that was right about, the, right about the time when things started, you know, going viral. Right. It was just kind of a thing. And uh, it was it was a lot easier at that point to to start, you know, sending out videos and, and people could the technology was there where it was easy to share video and share images. And really kind of the early stages of the Condors, you, if you wanted to be on SportsCenter or whatever, you had to mail a tape and all that stuff. And that incident was kind of the first one where the Condors kind of started to get mentioned. We got a lot of international run out of that one all over this country and Canada as well. And we had some fun with it. We had a cooler kicking contest at intermission the following week. And it, it was funny. You got, and the video has disappeared from YouTube. I, I think Marty must know people. It has long disappeared, but it was a classic. So it was, that a, was a lot of fun. But right. there, there's a whole lot of things. Let's go, that, let's go another let's one, Griff. Let's hear another go one. Go another one. And, uh, well, really short opening night. 1998 at the new Centennial Garden. I think it was October 17th, a little over 5,000 people. But without that new arena, we're not talking about this. Yeah. I don't remember much about the game. The Condors won. I think it was 2-1. to one, but Jay Neal scored the first goal. There you go. It was, it was 5,000 people there, so a, a great crowd. And, and for a team that had been playing on a stage at the convention center for three years prior to that, that's a huge moment. And, and you can't moment. discount that arena being built. And it was the second event ever in the arena. I think uh, one that stands out for me, and I don't know why, was the famous chicken, San Diego chicken, came to town. And I think that was uh, February of 2000. Largest crowd ever in Condor's history. The seating, they've been, uh, the seating's been rearranged, so there's fewer seats now. But standing room only, something like 90, almost 9,200 people. Wow. For the and San Diego chicken. For the San Diego chicken. <laughs> and, and the chicken was hilarious as a recovery. And one of my sons has a puck signed by the chicken from after that game. So he was pretty young we're, back then. Chicken's a legend. We're, we're, we're probably a worse place in this, uh, worse place now because we don't have the San Diego chicken regularly. <laughs> yeah, so I remember that. I remember some of the, 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 act, the uh, antics of the chicken. Uh, 
uh, games games kind of blend themselves, but yeah. obviously there was a game in April of uh, 2005 that stands out, and that's when Scott Gomez was playing for the NHL lockout, and he's playing for his hometown NHL star. Gomez playing for his hometown Anchorage or then Alaska Aces for you know five hundred dollars a week just for the love of the game, right? <clears throat> Right. And uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, he, he, he went for a line change, but the, and right where the line change is, he just tossed a puck in from the, about the blue line into the zone, was going to go for a line change, and Ashley Langdon him, just crushed him into the boards by an open gate, broke his yeah. pelvis. The door and was it's partially, st- open. partially open. I, I, I missed that hit. I was on the air at the time, and I remember Kevin Barrett – my color man at the time, an ex-condor and fog player, and uh, he was watching. He always watched the little things while I'm calling where the puck is going around the boards, and all of a sudden he goes, uh-oh, look out. And, I, and I'm like, what? And I look up, and there is Scott Gomez laying half in, half out of the bench, his feet still on the ice, and just having an overwhelming sense of uh, it's on now. Yeah, and yeah. Things got pretty ugly after that. It got ugly, and the Condors won that game in a in a sh- shootout or over overtime overtime, I think. overtime in twenty twenty thirty seconds in overtime I think, which set up a game five just about two days later. That would have to be a Saturday night game five on a Monday, I think, in Alaska, which meant you know a quick trip up there and stuff. Yeah, but, quick quick meaning a quick turnaround, not a quick trip. Yeah, but death threats came in. And, yeah. and nobody, the team didn't know, but I, re- I went on that trip and I knew there had been threats. And so we get to the airport. It's like two o'clock in the morning on a Monday morning. Nobody's in there. We get off the plane. The concourse is empty except for some police presence. Yeah. And they were there to protect the condors. And then there were each van going to the hotel and they changed hotels from the usual to a hotel to a really nice upscale hotel which <laughs> right. was, was really nice which was ironic i guess <laughs> and, but there was a was police a cruiser for guy. each <laughs> exactly. each each van carrying the players had a police escort to the hotel wow well it, it, and it, it seemed at the time and i remember paul rosebush looking around it while we were at the bag claim and he's noticing the cops of course and he looks at me and and he says is this really necessary? And of course he didn't know what I knew at the time. And that was, you know, before I got off the air that night and I got down to my office and plugged back into my computer. And I mean, I had emails, the general Condor's email address went to me. I had some that went to that. I had some that went to me. Uh, I had a voicemail or two. Uh, Matt Riley had a voicemail or two. I mean, these were, these were threats. That was, I mean, they were bad. It it wasn't like generic, you know, I'm an opposing fan, I hate you threats. It was, some of them were very specific. We know where you're staying when you're in town. Sleep with the lights on. (laughs) Double lock your doors. Jeez. Uh, We're coming to get you. Troubling stuff. They They were bad. And at the time, I just thought, I just thought, I like, I don't even want to go up there. Yeah, I mean, the headline the next day in the Anchorage paper was Gomez's pelvis broken in OT defeat to Condors. Subhead, Alaska star hospitalized by cheap shot. Wow. I mean, they weren't too happy up in there, Alaska. There was definitely a tendency towards hyperbole up there, too. <laughs> I, you know, Gomez got carted off, and he went to the hospital. And, you know, before the end of the game, it was his career is done, and he's can't walk, and... I mean, he had like a micro fracture and he was back on the ice totally in time for training camp the next season. But the overreaction up there was just unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right, that's a great one, too. That's a great one. And then uh, I think, uh, oh, the condor breaking free. How can we forget that? (laughs) Uh, February 8th of 2013. the, The biggest. Is that the biggest video in Condor's history? Uh, I believe it is. How many, how many views does that have on uh, YouTube? I, honestly, I don't know. I kind of lost count. Uh, we were over a million right. uh, you know, within a month yeah. of, of it happening. And that's something that kind of shook down on a, on a weekend. The team was on the road. And all day long on a Saturday, I was just getting email after email from news agencies and of course, you know, Ryan was getting them as well. Ryan Holt, who was responsible for making sure the video got out to everybody. And to this day, it still shows up on, on shows, funniest videos, animals getting loose yeah. videos. And 
Um, you know, there are TV stations in Japan who pay us a thousand dollars to run that video. <laughs> I mean, we're, it's we're crazy. We're sitting there, the national anthem's going on, and up in the booth, and the condor kind of gets loose, and the national anthem, and everything's okay. And he gets back, and when the handler goes down and falls down and and breaks his shoulder, Joe basically. the bird man. And, and then the condor got loose again, the heads toward the bed. <laughs> Halty just starts losing it. Uh, <laughs> the, the bird's going over to the condor. The bird man bench. was bringing the bird out to put him at the perch. Look at the condor's players are getting away from him. Look at him. There's, oh, there he goes up on the bench. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. This is the greatest. Oh, ever my seen. gosh. <laughs> The bird's going down. He's down the top. Bird, yeah, the bird's just, down. He's down the top. It was so funny to be up in the booth and, and listen to Holty and uh, Bardo having to ab lid what, what's totally unscripted going just on. Just laughing. Yeah. I, the funny thing about that night, too, was that it, that was all before the game started. And then once the bird was down the tunnel and Joe the Birdman followed him, everything was back to normal when we played a game and the that poor guy ended up losing and, and we kind of all forgot about it until yeah. afterwards that poor guy got hurt you know with, yeah he cracked a couple of ribs yeah i mean yeah. just just from doing that too goodness i think uh bardo wasn't here but i think one of the the highlights is the uh, the team record 11 game winning streak and that was to start the season in uh 1999 and I remember I, I must have gone on a bus. I must have been on the bus trip trip to them for an early, or or been there when they got back from Phoenix, which was their eighth straight win. There was actually dozens, maybe 50, 60, 70 people met the bus when it got back to Rob or Centennial Arena. Then, right after that eighth straight win, coming back and they won three more games. I think they won three by shootouts and. Wow. And eleven game winning streak, and I think that helped start feed the Condor's Town mania. That's when people started hearing about them, started saying, "Have you seen the Condors? Hey, this is a pretty good team." The rest of the season wasn't all that great, but that eleven game start to win the season was pretty special. Yeah. All right, Griff, keep going. Uh, what else do we have here? On my little list. Oh, the line brawl. There's been lots of line brawls. Matt Riley brought up. Uh, one against Fresno to open the season, which I've totally slipped my mind, <laughs> probably because it was the pre-video uh, days of getting stuff up on the Internet, but the one in January of 2002, late in the game when the Condors were losing like 5-1 to one to Ontario and the goalies got involved. Great. You can't get enough of that. And we got a lot of, uh, we got a lot of uh, publicity out of that one too, ESPN. And um, you know they loved it because the goalies fought. And only one of the goalies had their mask off, and that was J.F. Barube, who's up in the NHL right, right. now. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. But that the, the funny thing about that brawl at home was it was a year to the day of the most penalized game in Condor's history, which was in Alaska the previous year, uh, in which about five or six Condors players got suspended, including Marty Raymond, for sending guys off the bench after the game was done. <laughs> and it was the most penalized game in Condors history. And then a year to the day later, uh, we break uh, part of that record anyways uh, with the, you know arguably the second biggest brawl in team history. Wow. wow. And, and the, the biggest brawl, of course, being – Two worlds away in Anchorage. Right. Nobody it's, almost, really, it's almost like it doesn't happen. Yeah, it's almost <laughs> like it really didn't happen because it wasn't. And I think one of the things, that, and Bartle was gone, but what stands out in my mind was uh, April of 2007. It was a first-round playoff game, first-round playoff series against Fresno. The Condors had lost the first game up there in Fresno, 7-3. to three. Lost the next night, 9-3, to three, just being blown out, dead in the water. And Kevin St. Jocks, 36-year-old veteran player, I'm walking in the hallway behind the uh, – this was at the Save Mart Center, so it was a nice arena in Fresno. And he is uh, on a tirade of all tirades at every cuss how word many, in the book. How many bleeps would, would have been in that? Uh, it would have been a bleep, beep. And I'm telling beep, beep, beep. It would have been basically 90% <laughs> right. beeps. And he goes on and on. Anyway, they come back to Bakersfield. St. Jocks gets a goal in the next game. They win. He gets three goals, three assists, and a fight in the next game to tie the series. The Condors win the series 4-2. to two. 
And I, I can't help but think that tirade that night at the Save Mart Center had something to do with it. So but, there's definitely out. like, uh, even within the 17 years of the Condors, there's kind of a first half and a second half where guys like, uh, like Jocko, you know, were around and guys like Paul Willett and, and Sean Byram and Jason Firth and Jamie Cook and guys that played into their 30s, which doesn't really happen too often anymore at that level. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, that was his last season. Yeah, and I think that that's probably, as we were just talking memories, it's it's different eras. The West Coast Hockey League and the early ECHL. The ECHL is now is much different than when the Condors first yes, joined the right. ECHL. Yes. And the fact that these players from the West Coast Hockey League and the early ECHL days, usually it was a woman getting their hook into them here in Bakersfield, but they stuck around. Your Steve Dowies, your Hofstrands, uh, Kevin Barrett. The list goes on and on. Glenn Mears, Jamie Cook still here in town. And, and I think Bakersfield has benefited greatly. It's not one highlight, but it's, it's over the course of several seasons that I think the community as a large ha has has gained from hockey being here because most of these guys are now active some ways in the communities, various ways. Andrew Ionero is another one that comes to mind that's stuck here. I mean, there's a dozen that are still here. Many of them are, are coaching the uh, Traveling Dragons uh, hockey team, the youth hockey team, and, and that's something that's never going to happen without hockey and, and only happened – because of the makeup of hockey back then where players came and stuck around longer now, which is more of a right. transitional phase. So I think that that's a real plus for, for hockey in Bakersfield and has been, and it's, it's not a one highlight, but uh, one, of one, of yeah, many, one of many. Yeah. You're looking at that list there. I mean, what else in your mind what stands else? out, Kevin? Uh, you know, it's funny that I've been here. I was here for four years from 2001 205 and then it came back i've been here since 07 a lot of my memories as i was thinking about this are from my first season my first two seasons or the last two seasons and like griff said a lot of the middle kind of blends together certainly the all-star game uh hosting it would be one of those right in the middle um of my tenure that's that stands out just how much work it was to put that on and and how much fun the fans had and and the entire the entire week leading into it. Uh, but I remember a lot of things from the road, uh, you know, that Griff wouldn't have been privy to as well. Uh, Paul Kelly, who was our coach from 01 to 03, uh, he, threw, he threw a tirade up in Idaho once that put, put Marty Raymond's cooler kicking to shame. <laughs> uh, we, we had been, in the first period, I think we, we had been called for eight or nine penalties. I mean, it, it, was, a, it was atrocious. We were shorthanded by more than half the period we gave up four goals and and Paul Kelly Kells as they called him just had had enough and he threw the sticks he started with the water bottles wow he went down to the end he threw the sticks and then he was down at the end of the bench and had to walk back to the middle so he walked up in front of the bench he started throwing all the towels there's a Jeez. dozen towels on each bench every game he's throwing all those and the backup goalie, and I can't remember what season it was or who the goalie was. It might have even been Scott Hay. Whoever the, the other goalie was looked up at him and gave him his mask. <laughs> and he <laughs> threw the goalie's mask out on the ice as well. And he got the hook for the night. And uh, I just remember my call of it just laughing hysterically as it was happening. And, and unfortunately, that predated the the video and the up on stuff. Right. And there's no video of that anywhere. So uh, if there was, that would uh, that would get tons of views right now if we could put it up. It was great. And talking about the last, you know, three seasons. Uh, I mean, you've, you've gone through an ownership change, a league change, color change, logo change, uh, three different coaches in the last year. Uh, you know, it's just an incredible. It's been an incredible whirlwind over yeah, twenty four months, basically. It has, and when you talk about you know great moments of the seventeen years uh, for me, uh, and maybe it's because I have seen so many games. Uh, a lot of what stands out in my mind are things that happened off the ice, things that we've done, uh, changes to the organization. Uh, the day that we announced that the Oilers were purchasing the Condors really is, uh, you know, that's a, a flagship moment in this organization because um, you, 
any in in minor league sports in general, it's it's rare for a team to stick around for 17 plus years. Mm-hmm. It just is. I mean, we're already in the upper half, you know, of the new league we're going into, and um, certainly we're in the ECHL for for the age of our team. But to have the Oilers come in and and take take the team out of the hands of a private investor, um, you know who. You know, who knows how long they can hold on to a team. All right. 17 years is a long time for one guy. So it it, it kind of, it, to me, it feels like there's the Condors before the Oilers purchase, and then there's a the Condors after it. And the stability and the support that uh, the, we're a part of a bigger picture now is um, – it, that's that's important. But one that, that's interesting, we've talked about this a little bit before, that seems to be respectful of that tradition, that heritage. Yeah, well, I think they've kind of gotten a, a glimpse into it, and and maybe it's some of the uh, some of the promotions and some of the things that have garnered us attention off the ice, making people take notice and and making people understand that there is a history here, and um, and I think if I think any doubt uh, going into that. Uh, was erased during one of one of my favorite memories of my time here just happened a couple of months ago and it was when we announced that the name would stay yeah. the same pretty dramatic it was dramatic again it was an emotional response from the fans and um, I think it kind of made it worthwhile and uh, and, you know, the Oilers had some representatives here. Kevin Lowe was here. Bill Scott was here. And one of them turned to Matt as, as the fans are reacting and said, I, I think we made the right choice. <laughs> and, you know, just to take notice and, and respect that. I love that that when it looked like it was going to be the Oilers for just a quick second yeah. there, the fans were like, you know, they kind of – it was accepting of it. But when it came became the Condors, then, then it kind yeah. of validated everything well, you guys Well, we, we like to mess with people mm-hmm. a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I, I, I have no purpose. doubt. I'm not privy to what goes on at Edmonton, but I, I just have the feeling that this is an organization that really probably wanted to change the name and wanted to be oil-related because of everything that was yeah. said from the time they purchased the team on and the hints. But as they looked into it, and as I said in uh, some articles, you've got 17 years of branding mm-hmm. and that corporations pay millions upon millions of dollars branding and right. there was such a good brand and such a well-known brand in the condors that i just don't when it when push came to shove you just could not change the name i mean you, you'd be throwing it out and, and starting new and you just don't do that so you live with it and and right all along i, I knew that they were going to change the colors i mean there, there's a lot of reasons why you want to change the colors and, and and at this level you got your players going up and down all the time gloves you know, you take your same pair of gloves with you because goal scorers love their gloves, <laughs> and they don't want to be in a different pair of gloves and, and little things like that. But it's and, and then that makes the team much closer to the Oilers, even yeah. though it's a right. Condors. And that's what they'll want for sure to make them feel like they're part of the Oilers organization, even though they're Condors. Well, my favorite moment, uh, guys, is uh, the uh, drive to Stockton last year from <laughs> Jersey. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and then the subsequent drive back, uh, thinking to myself about two o'clock in the morning, that was really, really dumb, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, the turnaround. But yeah, it was, uh, it's been interesting to see how you guys have, uh, have evolved and, and all the changes that are going to happen, uh, coming up. So it can be very, like I said, a very busy off season. It's cool. Uh, it's as, as I was, as Griff asked me to think about this, it, I, I found myself drawn to the fact that there are a lot of great memories like really good ones, not just because they're recent, but over the last couple of years. And it makes me realize what we have here is good and that it's just continuing. This isn't a team that has all their great memories from the first three years and it's been just hanging on for a decade um, that I think we're on the verge of making some even greater memories. Very good. All right. Well, thanks to Kevin Bartle. Thanks to Mike Griffith. And uh, thanks to the Big Show Condors for all the great memories and the memories to be made still here. For the Bigfoot California, I'm Louis Amistoy.